61, 72 layers of flaky pastry today on the French Chef. <laughs> French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to the French Chef. I'm Julia Child. Today we're going to do pot feuilleté, French puff pastry. Pot means pastry and feuille means leaf. So pot feuilleté, leafy pastry or a flaky pastry. And the point is that it's not a hollowed sunk of, hunk of a solid hunk of dough like pie dough. What it is is paper thin layers of dough interspersed between paper thin layers of butter. And it's all created by a piece of dough. We'll just pretend that this is a piece of dough on which there is a layer of butter. There's your butter. And then by tricky folding and rolling, you start out like this. You fold up this piece of dough going over the butter, and then you fold the butter and dough down over, making three layers of dough and two layers of butter. And then you roll it all out, and here's how it looks when it's rolled all out. You've got your three layers of dough and your two layers of butter, and then you fold it again. You fold the bottom up to the middle and the top down over to cover it and you've made you've made one two three four five six layers of butter between seven layers of dough and this is all just a matter of the rolling and the folding you're not adding any more butter to the dough you're just rolling it out and folding it again and by geometric progression you're getting more and more layers that are thinner and thinner each one than the last, and you end up with a light, light and flaky gossamer pastry that's like this. And this is a, uh, it's, it's a ham tart, but in French it would be called a feuilleté au jambon. And it's absolutely delicious, and it's made with this pâte feuilleté, which starts out with the initial dough, which is known as the détente, D for dough, E T R E M P E, de trompe. And here are the proportions for it. Here's the dough, and the proportions are a pound of flour, and they're mixed flours. You have three and three, I mean two and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour, A P flour, all-purpose flour. And then to soften it down and make it a little more tender, you have three fourths cup of cake flour, and then. You mix the two flours together and you take out one half cup and reserve it for later. And you'll see where this goes in. And then you blend into it the flours, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter, teas a quarter cup of salad oil, and one cup of ice water. And you mix it all up. And I'm going to give you those proportions again. That's two and three quarters cup all-purpose flour, three quarters cup cake flour, two teaspoons salt, one fourth cup salad oil and one cup iced water. Mix it all up and out she goes onto your working surface. And this is a rather rough dough and you just put it into a rough ball and put it down to the side of your working surface. And that, that is your detente. And the oil in it acts as a little tenderizing for American flour also, which is a good thing. Now there's, that's for your dough layer. Now you have the butter. And you want three and a half sticks of chilled hard butter, which you've got to soften. And so you beat it up with a rolling pin or any convenient object. And then you start smearing it out with the heel of your hand. And the idea is to make the butter malleable but still cold. And then, that's your one half cup of mixed flours. And this goes into the butter because it all, it 
gives the butter a little more body and also in case the butter is a little bit liquid it soaks up some of the liquid. But this is very important that you get the butter so that it's smooth and malleable but still cold. And that is now ready. And then this you set to the side. And then you take your dough and you, the idea with the puff pastry, particularly in using non-French flour, is that you want to work it as little as possible so that you don't activate the gluten in the flour. French flour is, um, has less gluten content than, than our American flour and is therefore a little easier to work with. So if you could press and push and do as little rolling as possible of the dough to get it out to about 16 inches long and 8 inches wide. And if you want, when you can mix your detente, this initial dough, you might find it a little easier to mix it first and then chill it for half an hour, but I don't think it makes too much difference. The main thing is, don't work it too much. And then when your dough is out into its rectangle, you're ready to put the butter on. And you see now at this point why it is that the butter has been softened the way it has, because you want to have to spread it out onto the dough. And you notice this is only going to go two thirds the way down and the dough is still rough at this point. It's going to smooth out later. But get that as evenly as possible. Spread along two thirds of the dough. And leave about, oh, about a quarter of an inch all around of, that is unbuttered because it's, then it's going to be folded. Now this is something when you're doing puff pastry, don't, if you've never done puff pastry, do it on a very hot day because it is very, very difficult to do because it is just like, it is just like, uh, well, it is, it's, there's so much butter in it that when it's hot, the, the butter get, begins to soften and then the dough is very, very hard to work. Now this butter, you see, is just a layer on top of the dough and now you're going to fold the, bo the bottom third up to the middle of the dough and then take the top third with the buttered layer and fold it down over. So now this is called your first turn and you take the dough and you turn it so that this flap is to your right. It's so you now as though if you open it up you like you were opening up a book and there's your layer of butter and there's your two layers of dough, I mean three layers of dough and two of butter and then flour very lightly. And if you feel that this is too soft to roll at this point, you can refrigerate it. The thing to do always when you're making puff pastry is to remember that if anything gets difficult to do, stop where you are and refrigerate it. And now this you want to roll out about 16 by 8. And this first, first one is always rather quite soft unless you've refrigerated it, but you can perfectly well do this. There, that's about, about 16 inches and it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. And then this gets, take a look at it and then it may turn out that you have little bits of butter that have come out the sides, but don't worry about it at this time and don't be upset that the dough looks a little bit rough. And these little bits of butter that have come out, you could put a little tiny bit of flour on, but it isn't going to make, isn't really going to make very much difference. And now you're going to be ready for your second fold. But just, I think people get rather upset about it, a new kind of pastry like this. And, but just remember that you're going to be master of it just by having a refrigerator. Now for the second turn, you fold, this is a slightly different than the first one, you fold the end, the two ends so that they meet in the middle. And then you fold it over like this. 
and then there you flower a little bit there. And I'm going to show you so that you'll see more clearly what has happened. I'm going to show you how it looks with my mock-up. I don't want to get my, get my mock-up dough all flowery. Now here you were, after you'd had, after you'd rolled out from that first turn, you had three layers of dough and two layers of butter. And then that second turn was you folded the one end up near the middle and the second end up to meet it. And you here have, there you've got four layers of butter on this side and four layers of butter on that. And then you fold it over so that they meet. And this now gives you eight layers of butter and nine layers of dough. The two layers of dough which meet here fuse together making one layer. So you always have one more, you lose some layers of dough, but you always have one more layer of dough than you do of butter. So this keeps going on in geometric progression. But as you can see, this dough is very hard to handle now. So and the layers are also very thick. It is going to get at least two more rolls and possibly four, depending on how you feel about it. But you couldn't roll it now because it's just too sticky. And you've also worked the flour so much, the dough so much, that the gluten has become enraged and overactivated. So now you want to wrap it and refrigerate it. But take the balls of your fingers and mark it with two little finger marks which show that you have made two turns because who knows you may go off on a world tour and put this in the freezer and if you didn't have marked it when you came back six months later you wouldn't know what you had done but you can't use it now because you still have to give it two more rolls so wrap it up in plastic and put it in a plastic bag and I found that wax paper doesn't work it just sticks all over it so get some heavy plastic and wrap it up and then refrigerate it. And here, just remember that puff pastry is a prima donna dough. And like prima donnas, you've got to keep it cool and you've got to give it plenty of rest and just take very good care of it and then, and then it'll act properly for you. Now here's the two turns, which are now nicely chilled and ready to go. And this should chill a minimum of 40 minutes. And I think that if you're new to the dough, you'd be much better to let it chill about an, at least an hour or even, even overnight, if you wish. You can leave it, leave it rest for a long time, but if you don't leave it, let it rest enough, you're going to get into trouble. And then to get it going, you beat. So this I made, oh, last night and it's just been sitting getting chilled and you beat it now so to decongeal the, decongeal the butter and get it started to roll and actually by beating it you've practically ha rolled it out half done half your work but that softened it enough so that you can roll it and you want to roll it to about 20 inches by 10 I'm going to take my big rolling pin for that and then even it out as necessary and as you can see if you don't have a nice big pin you're you're going to have an awful time this is this stupid little pin that you find in a great many stores look what happens if you roll across it you make a big hole in the dough and it's i'm gonna it's a nasty pin and i don't know why anybody makes such a pin this is uh the handle of a garage broom and it's much better than that stupid pin or here's a piece of plastic this is a plastic tubing I've got a friend in, down in Virginia and she uses this and this is very good it should your pin should be at least 18 inches long and it should be heavy I really think I think two or three pins are usually useful when you're making puff pastry but this great American roller bearing pin is really is a, just a fine professional pin and you can get this in a hotel supply store and some of the fancy gourmet type shops sell them and this is about 20 inches long on the rolling surface and it's good and heavy 
and it does half of the work for you. Now after you've rolled it out, you're ready to fold it, and this is like folding a business letter. You fold the bottom third up to the middle, and then you fold the top one down to cover it. And I should have folded it a little bit more, and then that comes down to cover it, that top third, and then you again turn it as though it were like a book. Be sure that you keep scraping your working surface clean because it will make your dough stick otherwise. In this case I'm using a, a plastic and then lightly flour and then roll it out again. But you see now that the dough has chilled and rusted it's very easy to roll. So what thing to do is to give yourself every single advantage and you're not going to run into any trouble. Now again we have the same fold like a business letter up to the middle and down to cover it. And I think one of the nice things about this dog is, is everything is so neat the way it folds up very neatly. Now that's your final you can stop right here at this fourth turn. This is and I'm going to mark it with two make certain two ball marks showing that this is the fourth turn and at this point it's ready to use but it, you still have to let it rest for about two hours again to relax the gluten so that you can roll the dough out into any form that you want. And you can if you wish you can go on and, and do two more turns. At this point it, it has 72 layers of butter between 73 layers of dough. And that's really about as much as you need for most purposes. If you're going to make a vol au vent or a little patty shells, you might want to roll it out, giving it some more turns. And it just would go up by geometric progression, multiply by three every time you roll it that way. That's 400 and something. I can't really, I can't, I'm not a, I'm not a lightning calculator. So this is now ready after it has rested for two hours or overnight, or you can freeze it for a year practically. You're ready to, ready to use it. And so this is a dough that has had four turns and is chilled and rested and ready to go. And this again, because this is rested nicely, is going to have to be beaten up. Get my rolling pins here. And this, in this instance, I'm using a marble. And a good thing to do if you're going to do a lot of pastry work is to get a marble cut so that it will fit into your refrigerator. And when it's a hot day, when you're on a chilled marble, you're not going to have any trouble at all rolling out your dough. Now, I'm not going to need all of this for this feuilleté au jambon, so I'm going to roll out a little bit and then cut, cut off about a third of it. And that can be set aside and used another time. And then this, I'm going to roll out to heavens, probably less than a quarter of an inch thick. Now this is an important business here in which if you find that you haven't rested your dough enough and it resists you and refuses to roll out, just stop absolutely where you are and refrigerate it again and then continue. In other words, if you're new at puff pastry, don't expect to be able to make puff pastry and serve it and make it after lunch and serve it for dinner because you might run into a little trouble at first just because you aren't familiar with it. So give yourself plenty of time because you can always stop. Now I'm going to, we have a bottom and a top, so I'm going to cut off 
a strip and reserve that for the top of the pastry. And this, you roll it out as long and as wide as you wish. It depends on what size pastry sheet it's going to be on. This is going to be on a pastry sheet that's about 17 inches long. And so this is about eight or nine inches wide. The nice thing, this is a, a free form thing, so you can do it any size that you wish. And in this case, we're going to have a floured pastry sheet. If you remember our, if you happen to see a show called Meat Loaf Masquerade, you remember that this, our French instructor always floured his pastry sheets and found that it worked out much better and that the pastry didn't burn. And then press that out. And again, if it's a hot day, if you get it onto the sheet and it's hard to work, refrigerate it. And then you want to prick it. This is a, a, a roller pricker. I think this also is Italian, I'm not sure. But you want to prick it either with something like this or with, a, with some forks, because this keeps the pastry down. And then, after you've gotten that bottom out, you're ready to put on a filling. And this is a ham, creamed ham filling. This is two cups of ham. I had a great big, a great big party and had some ham and, and have some leftover. So I've got two cups of ham pieces plus a cup and a half of very nicely flavored cream sauce with an egg yolk in it, and half a cup of mixed Parmesan and Swiss cheese. What, what I love about this kind of a, what, this business is that anything that's quite simple, like in ham filling, looks absolutely elegant when you put it in puff pastry. And I'm gonna cut out the corners there so as to make the puff pastry not too thick. And all of these little pieces of pastry you can reserve and use again. And now the sides go up. And then paint that with water. And then the cover is going to go on. And there's the cover. That was that leftover strip and then stretch it out and then you want little decorative fork marks around this seals the cover onto the lower part and also makes a little decoration around the side As you could, I think one of the great advantages of, of puff pastry is that the fact that you can keep it for so long in the, in the freezer. It just freezes per perfectly. And then the look at how quick this is to assemble. That because the puff pastry is so good in itself, you don't have to do anything fancy inside it. And then you can get this assembled and put it, cover it up and put it in the refrigerator. And then just before you're ready to bake, put on an egg glaze. This is one whole egg beaten with one teaspoon of water. And this makes your best, best glaze. And then we want some little steam holes in the middle. I'll do one about down one third. And then one down another third. And then it has a, a second glazing. I don't think I got any on the first. And then it has decorative fork mark. I mean, dec decorative knife, fancy knife work. And cut down into the pastry 
about an eighth of an inch. And then these will separate, as you'll see, as the pastry bakes and make a very nice open work pattern. In a way, it's a little bit like the slashing of bread. And then you want to put some funnels in, which act, which release the steam when it's baking. And then it's ready to bake. As soon as you've got the glaze on, it's ready to bake. And this goes into the lower middle of a 450 degree oven and you let it bake for about 20 to 25 minutes until it is puffed and begun to brown nicely. And then you lower this thermostat to 350 degrees and let it bake for 20 to 25 minutes more until the sides are nice and... I'm going to do this up and out so you can see how it is slide it off and then we'll take a look at it and see how to tell that it's done. Plunk. <laughs> now you see that see the sides are, are crisp and it, and it just feels down there the little funnel holes and look at see how those nice map marks have made a very nice pattern in there. Now we're going to take it into the dining room and serve it, covered with flour as I am. So I want you to, I want you to see how it looks when we cut into it. I'm going to use, I think a serrated knife is a good thing to cut it with. I'll cut off the one end and then cut the middle part so that you can see how that looks. This makes an absolutely lovely first course for a dinner, or you can use it as a luncheon or a supper dish and serve it with, with just a green salad and a nice red wine. And as you notice, you can make it either this oblong shape or this lovely round shape. Now, Puff pastry pot feuillete is supposed to be so difficult to make that many French cooks have never even attempted it. But as you have seen, if you always treat it like prima donna dough, give it plenty of rest and keep it cool, you've got it made. It's easy to do if you know how to do it. And now you know how. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is co-author of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2.